بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم قوني فيه على إقامة أمري وأذقني فيه حلا تذكرك وأوزعني فيه لأداء شكرك بكرمك واحفظني فيه بحفظك وسترك يا Assalamu alaikum children and welcome to another story from the Holy Quran with me, Zahra Al Alawi. I hope you have been enjoying these videos. We have been learning so much about the holy prophets that Allah has sent. It seems that the holy prophets have worked very, very hard, don't you think? They all went through so much adventure and tests. I think it's amazing. Today, I am here with another story for you all from the Holy Quran. And this story is about a big sacrifice. Who knows what story I'm talking about? When we talk about sacrifice, which story am I talking about? Yes, that's right. I am talking about Prophet Ibrahim and his big sacrifice. I am sure you all know what th this story because you see in Eid al-Adha, which is the Eid after Hajj, that your parents, you see your parents talking about sacrificing sheep. Or maybe you have seen decorations around the house um, during Eid with sheep on it. Do you remember seeing that? And do you know what Eid al-Adha means? What does it mean? Who knows? Eid al-Adha literally means festival of sacrifice. So, what sacrifice are we talking about? And what lessons can we learn from this story? Now, this story is mentioned in the Holy Quran. So, let's get into today's story for today. One night, the Prophet Ibrahim which some call Prophet Abraham, had a dream. He was ordered by Allah to sacrifice his son. You see, children, Allah talks to the prophets, but he does not talk like we talk or how I am talking to you now. No, it's very different. When he wants, to, when he wants his prophets to do something, he shows it to them in a dream or with a sign, or through the angels, um, or in a different way. In this story, he told um, Prophet Ibrahim in a dream. A dream for the Prophet from Allah is like an order from God. Okay? So the next day, the Prophet Ibrahim called Ismail. He said, Ismail, I had a dream last night. What, dr what was the dream? said his son Ismail. Allah wants me to sacrifice you, said Ibrahim. Oh, said Ismail, I trust you, my father, and I also trust Allah, so I am ready for whatever um, I need to do, and whatever you need to do, you will find me patient. Ismail was not afraid. He loved Allah very, very much. He also knew Allah was good. Allah never does anything to harm good people. In fact, Allah loves all his people, all his creation. After all, he is the one who created us all, right? So Ismail knew 
that God was not going to harm him or do something bad to him, he trusted Allah 100%. The Prophet Ibrahim, Ibrahim and Ismail left. They went to a valley of Mina, the valley of Mina. This was the place that I Prophet Ibrahim saw in his dream. So, Ismail lay down on the ground. He closed his eyes. His father stood next to him. He picked up the knife. He was ready to obey Allah by sacrificing his son. But wait! Guess what happened at, right at that moment? Who can guess what happened? At this moment, the angel Jibra'il, or some may call him Angel Gabriel, appeared. Why do you think he appeared? Why do you think the angel appeared? What did he want? You see, Allah sent the angel Jibra'il with a ram to be sacrificed instead, instead of Ismail. In this way, Ismail was saved. Ibrahim and Ismail were so happy. They thanked Allah and then Prophet Ibrahim sacrificed the ram instead. This was all a test from Allah and they both passed the test. Allah did not want to harm Ismail, but he wanted to test them. Allah loves people who listen to him. He loves people who also trust in him. Allah cares for us all so, so much. And you, yes, you my beautiful boys and girls, you watching now, Allah loves you so much. He created you and he looks out for you and he would not want to see you in harm. If you pay attention next time it's Eid al-Adha, you will notice. You can also ask your parents about this story and they will tell you all about it. So the lesson for today is Allah loves you. He will always look out for you and he is watching out for you. The second lesson is sometimes things happen in our life to test us. Don't worry, if sometimes it gets hard, we have to be patient. It will all work out perfectly at the end. Just like this story. Now you know, this, now you know the story of Prophet Ibrahim and his great sacrifice. And you can find this story in Surat As-Safat, Ayah 102-111. That's Surah as safat Ayah 102 to 111. If you want to open the Quran at the end of this video and read the verses, even if it's in English, to understand them more, then you can have a discussion with your parents and you can open the Holy Quran and read this beautiful story. Now it's question time like we always do at the end of the video. Question number one. What is the meaning of Eid al-Adha. What does it mean? I said it at the beginning of the video. Number two, what message did Prophet Ibrahim get in the dream? What was he told to do? Number three, what message did Angel Jibra'il come with that changed the story and changed the whole narrative? And the last question, what lessons did you learn from this story? Now, this can be a lesson which I probably haven't mentioned. Maybe you um, th have th thought of something else. You tell me what lessons did you learn from this beautiful story. And I hope you enjoyed today's story. Prophet Ibrahim is a prophet who went through so much. And there are so many stories mentioned in the Holy Quran about him. So many adventures and so many lessons that we can learn from him. And inshallah, in the upcoming videos, I'll be telling you more stories about Prophet Ibrahim, which I'm sure you probably already know. But inshallah, we'll be, be talking more about him in the upcoming videos. So remember his name and remember this story because we'll be telling you another story as well. Because Prophet Ibrahim always showed Allah that he was patient. He always showed Allah that he trusted him. And he, he was always tr showed Allah that he obeyed him. And these are f um, three f things that we should always do. We should always trust Allah. We should always be patient 
and we should always obey him, okay? So I hope these three points, you can take it on with you and inshallah, we could all obey and trust the almighty Allah. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's story from the Holy Quran. I'll be back with you tomorrow and I'll be telling you another beautiful story from the Holy Quran. Um, stay safe, stay happy. Um, I hope you are enjoying the holy month of Ramadan with your beautiful families. And inshallah, I'll see you tomorrow. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.